In the previous video, I proved these two facts, and now I'm going to prove that finite and countable unions are closed in the measurable set of measurable sets. So first, if E, F, an element of M mu, let's analyze mu of A, just for some general A. That's going to be mu of A intersect E plus mu of A intersect E complement, right? By measurability of E. But if I analyze each and every one of these, that right there is going to be mu of A intersect E intersect F plus mu of A intersect E intersect F complement. This right here is equal to mu of A intersect E complement intersect F plus mu of A intersect E intersect E complement intersect F complement by the measurability of F. And so, let's just skip that step and say right there, mu of A is equal to that. Okay, what's the point of doing this? Well, if you look, A intersect E intersect F, A intersect E intersect F complement, A intersect E complement intersect F, A intersect E complement intersect F complement right there. And these are the sets we want to study. So. Remember, this right here, let's uh, study those sets now. A intersect E union F plus the measure of A intersect E union F complement, right? And because right there we have a union, I can just separate that out into addition, as long as I have a less than or equal to by subadditivity. So that's going to be A intersect E intersect F plus mu of A intersect E intersect F complement plus mu of A intersect E complement intersect F plus mu that we can turn into that mu of A intersect E complement intersect F complement. Now, mu of A mu, this right here is equal to mu of A, therefore I can replace this with mu of a, right? So that I get this. Mu of a is greater than or equal to this, but it's very easily proven that mu of a is also greater than or equal to this. So if this didn't make sense, if this didn't make sense, what I did was I separated mu of a into mu of a intersect e plus mu of a intersect e complement, and then I turned that into this via the uh, measurability of f. This, I use these facts because they have unions to turn it into addition in a less than or equal to sign. And then I use the fact that those two are equal and put mu of a right there. That's just an overview of what just happened if it went over your head. Okay, so now I can also prove that mu of a is greater than or equal to that same thing because mu of a is mu of a intersect E union F union E union F complement, right? Okay, because that's just X, A intersect X is A. That's going to be equal to mu of A intersect E union F um, union a intersect E union F complement. Okay? And by the previous thing, this is less than or equal to this. Look at that. Um, this is going to be less than or equal to that. Less than or equal to, I'll call it CC. It's less than or equal to CC, therefore A is greater than or equal to CC, and it's less than or equal to, therefore it's equal. And we've proven measurability here. Okay? We've proven that for two things union together, they are measurable. Two measurable sets union together is measurable because I have A intersect E union F, A intersect E union F complement. Okay. So. This is very quickly extends to finite unions because if I have E1 union E2 
Union E3, Union so on, EN. All right. This right here is measurable. Okay, by finite unions, but therefore this is measurable and then extends outwards through each of the parentheses. And so we proved it for finite. But what about countable or infinite or whatever you want to call it? Uh, I'm going to prove it for disjoint first and then that'll easily extend to just normal. Okay, so if set EI i equals 1 to infinity is a disjoint a union it's a disjoint collection collection of measurable sets sets uh, then what can we do with this um, I'm going to say fn equals union i equals 1 to n of ei, and f is going to be the entire union, the union from i equals 1 to infinity of ei. Okay, so now, what are we going to do with this? And I tell you, it's pretty complicated. <laughs> okay, so first, analyze mu of a. Mu of a is mu of a intersect fn plus mu of a intersect fn complement, right? Nothing more, nothing less, because fn is a, count is a finite union of measurable sets, therefore that works. Let's analyze this. Mu of a intersect fn, I can tell you. What can I tell you about it? Well, each ei is measurable, so mu of a intersect fn, intersect en is perfectly legal to do here, plus mu of a intersect fn, intersect en complement, of course. This is by measurability, and then from that we get mu of a intersect, that's just going to be en, because en is a subset of fn, therefore their intersection is just en, and then plus mu of a intersect fn minus 1 by disjointness, because they're disjoint, so disjoint, just a bunch of disjoint sets. If I remove one of them, if I remove the last one in the sequence, that's just the previous one in the sequence. Okay? So then, what can I tell you about that? Well, I can do the same process. Just plug in fn minus 1 there. Do the same process, I can get that this is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of mu of a intersect ei. Cool. So, what does this tell me about this? Well, this tells me, this tells me that this is equal to mu of a intersect uh, the sum, sorry, the sum from i equals 1 to n of mu of a intersect ei, right? By that thing we just proved. Then I'm going to leave that in there. Now, what we use is the fact that it's a complement so that unions actually decrease, right? Because I claim that a, I claim that fn complement is a superset of f complement. Okay? So suppose x is an element of f complement, implying that x is not an element of f complement. That immediately implies that x is not an element of f, n. Sorry, it's not an element of f. So that impl immediately implies x is not an element of f, n, which implies that x is an element of f, n complement. Therefore, it's a subset. Okay, so I'm going to say by number two, that's going to be greater than or equal to the sum from i equals one 
to n of mu of a intersect ei plus mu of a intersect f complement. Right? Okay, let's take the limit. So this implies that mu of a is greater than or equal to the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of mu of a intersect di plus mu of a intersect f complement. Why would we want this? Well, this right here is actually just mu of a intersect f, right? Or, yeah, it's going to be greater than or equal to mu of a intersect f. This right here. Why would it be greater than or equal to it? By subadditivity. We're given that. And then plus mu of a intersect f complement, right? And then it's automatic that that is just mu greater than or equal to mu of a. It's stuck in between mu and a and mu of a. So therefore, it's equal. Therefore. Therefore, I'm going to keep all of this work down. Mu of a is equal to mu of a intersect f plus mu of a intersect f complement. But this is for disjoint. We want countable. Well, turns out the union i equals 1 to infinity of ai for general ai, this is a general union, is equal to the union from i equals 1 to infinity of ai tilde. What's ai tilde? Well, we define ai tilde to be equal to a, uh, sorry, let's say aj tilde. It's going to be aj removing all of the ones before it. Removing all of the ones before it. Okay? How is How are these unions equal? Well, suppose x is an element of this one. That means that x is an element of a j twiddle for some a j twiddle, right? Implying that x is an element of a j and x is not an element of union i equals 1 to j minus 1 of a i, right? Basically meaning if a is an element of this, it's an element of the entire union. X is an element of the entire union AI. Now let's suppose the other direction. X is an element of AI. That means uh, X is an element of the union of AI. That means that X is an element of AJ for some minimum AJ, for minimum J. So there's no smaller one. Implying that x is an element of aj, and that x is not an element of the union from all of the ones before it. Right? Because if it's the minimum, if it was an element of the union of all of the ones before it, then it'd be an element of one of the ones before it. A contradiction, because it's the minimum. Implying that x is an element of aj twiddle. Implying that x is an element of the union of aj twiddle. Now what's what's the purpose of doing this? The disjoint. These are all disjoint. So this is this union is a disjoint union and therefore it's also measurable by this. Okay. Let me keep this here. Okay. I'm going to keep that fact right there, okay? It'll be useful. Because I claim that the outer measure is a measure on this. Okay? Um, right? So... Um, mu restricted to the measure of mu, a function from measure of mu into r star 
And of course, it's just going to be me normal mu, so I'll just call it mu, is a measure. Okay, we have the two properties, the two properties that we already need. All we need is the fact that it's not subadditive, but additive. Well, right here, let's take mu equal a equals f from right there. So mu of f is greater than or equal to the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of mu of a of f intersect ai, but f intersect ei is just ei, and f intersect that. There we go. Ooh, but we also know, and of course f right here is the union, the countable union of the disjoint ones. Ooh, but we also know that mu of f is less than or equal to i equals 1 to infinity of mu of ei by sub additivity. By the definition of subadditivity, well, then it's equal. That was easy. All we did was use a fact we had from before. And remember, that was for any a, so we could do it for f. So, that's it. From this outer measure, restricting to it a sigma algebra, which we proved was a sigma algebra, we created a measure.